Welcome to Let's Read Disney Adventures. You will have to tell me if this is a good idea or not. Um, I just got really inspired because I um, found a whole stack of Disney Adventure magazines. Here, I'll show you. Boom, we got a whole stack of Disney Adventure magazines that I found from my childhood. I used to think they were actually like, gonna be worth something one day. So sometimes I even put them in like little plastic bags to keep them safe and everything. But really like, you can find them in any thrift store or stuff like that. Uh, they really like, and also, you know, most of them aren't even in that good condition. Um, I had way more than that, but a lot of them, especially the really early ones, we actually had the first issue quite a bit around that era and those ones didn't survive. We read those to death. It seems like the earliest one that has survived out of this stack. I swear I had more than this that did survive, but maybe, maybe I got rid of them or possibly they are somewhere else. I don't know. But the earliest one is the one I thought we'd read today. And that's Star Trek Secrets. The one, um, Star Trek Generations had just come out. And so it's sort of covering that movie. You know, as I was saying, like, how we, we kind of loved these to death. Uh, I read them over and over again. Um, mostly covers had come off and stuff like that. In, in the US dollar value is 250, Canadian 295. So let's look up what that kind of means today. So this will be Canadian dollars because I'm Canadian and that's what came up. January 1995. So 1995. So it's 295 makes it about 450 um, today. So, you know, if you think about how much kids got out of these, really a lot of bang for the buck. I, re I really do think like, you know, I spend like today's money, five bucks on your kid. Um, and they would just read it front to back over and over again. Um, is Disney Adventure still a thing? I don't actually know. I just thought this might be a fun uh, experience to explore Disney Adventures magazine and really dig into some of the nostalgic stuff. I'm not going to read everything, but I thought it might be fun to, to look at a few a few things. So let's see. First of all, I got to mention the cover. I always loved it when they would take celebrities in real life and then mix them in with Disney characters. And this one's great because it's Huey, Dewey, and Louie. There's not a lot of sense to it all. I mean, uh, <laughs> one of them is apparently is blind, just like Jordy the Forge, visor works and everything. It's stuff like this I just think is really is really fun. I, I used to really dig it as a kid when it was stuff like um, this Batman and Robin one, not as cool because it was just Batman and Robin. It wasn't really what stood out when it came to uh, Disney Adventures. Like, I, I liked the mix of the real and the cartoony stuff. So yeah, let's have a look. Let's uh, open first page. Fudge. In some ways, I'll actually be spending more time on some of these uh, advertisements than I will the actual articles. Fudge. I think I saw an episode of that show, and it, it was based off of books, if I recall, but um, I just recall that I didn't find it in the least bit interesting. I don't remember this show at all. The Schnookums and Meat Funny Cartoon Show. When this came out, January 1995, I was eight, going on nine years old. So I was like the perfect age for this stuff. Street Fighter. Now, I never watched this movie as a kid. I really wanted to, but I think my mom was pretty protective of us and we didn't let us watch a lot of violent movies. So little did she know that this movie was not, I mean, it was violent and that there was some fighting, but like it was, it was so stupid and cartoony. So I watched this actually for the first time not long ago at all maybe a year ago if even um and i absolutely love it it is a cheese ball movie i think that street fighter movie is amazing in how completely off the mark it is <laughs> oh man see see this is the stuff that i live for is this um things like uh that just this perfectly encapsulates that that time period this kid making a uh middle school rap in the middle school subjects, math and PE are best. And history will make you snooze during an exam or test. When it comes to music, ace and bass and REM are cool. But to the kids in Middletown, Nirvana really rules. <laughs> the, 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 I gotta say, uh, his flows, not so good. I like this little debate. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers versus Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now that's funny because... I think it was the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers that kind of dethroned the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from their... I mean, they always remained relevant in pop culture, but they were, like, the big thing for kids' pop culture. And I think it was the, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers that kind of finally took that spot away from them. I didn't really watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm a, kind of a minority in that, and kids in my generation, everyone else did. Um, 
Uh, again, I kind of wasn't allowed to, but for some reason I was allowed to watch Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Go figure that one out. <laughs> I think because my mom actually watched that one and, and saw that it was like, it was goofy. Like, if you watch Mighty Morphin Power Rangers now, it is hard to go back to. I remember loving it and taking it very seriously as a kid, but now it's just like, oh, how, how did I ever take this seriously? Uh, from some kid in Virginia, I hate the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles don't need robots to help them, so they could kick the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers' butt. There's no question about it. The Power Rangers are just poor imitations of the Ninja Turtles. They should fight. Then everybody would see who was better. I never thought of it as a competition back then. Like, people just loved both. And it just so happened that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles had been around long enough that, like, this Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is just a cool new thing, but it doesn't mean you couldn't like the Ninja Turtles, and there was, I just never felt that there was a competition. Maybe, maybe that was just me and the people I was around, I don't know. Moving on, DA, DA Buzz. So, th things that are, you're trying to predict what it was like is the coolest thing uh, of that year. Uh, so you thought you were pretty hot stuff in 1994, right? Well, that's great, but 1995 is a brand new year with all the new rules about what's cool. And it, and it actually has answers. Like, it, it actually the, one of the questions is, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is way cooler than Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, true or false? And apparently, it is true. Apparently so. Well, how can I say? If Disney Adventures says so, I guess it's true. This year's TV battle will be between SSS and VRT. Who will win? I don't know what those are. I'm, I'm going to guess. I think VRT is VR Troopers. Do you remember VR Troopers? If you don't, John Tron has a hilarious video on it, so check that out. Uh, SSS, though. I cannot think of what that what that could be. SSS. There was a show called Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad, but that's got too many S's to be that. Oh, well, yeah, I don't know. If you know what SSS is, that it is in the same genre as v VRT, which may or may not be VR Troopers. See, the answer doesn't actually tell you. It just says that it could be either one. Anyway, we'll skip through some of that because that's just a lot of fluff. Okay, so here I have Indiana Jones Greatest Adventure. You know, I never had this game as a kid, and I've never actually seen it ever played by anyone. I've never seen a physical copy of this Indiana Jones game, despite, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind playing it because I think it's by the same guys who do those, um, the Star Wars, Super Star Wars games, and I have all three of those, and I think they're great. They're excruciatingly hard, but they're great. And this is basically in the same vein as that, and I would love to give it a try. Uh, just to have it beat me up, just like just like Star Wars. It is something when a game is really fun, despite the fact that it's almost unbeatable. So here's Ticket, your guide to TV, movies, music, and more. Sherlock Holmes, beware. Okay, so, <laughs> man, the Olsen twins. Man, I sometimes forget how big of a deal they were. I don't remember the Olsen twins having a lot of uh, theatrical released movies, if any. I don't know if there were any. Maybe It Takes Two or something like that. They had a certain market really cornered, and I know that they built an empire off of that, so it must have really worked. 12 video mystery series that I never watched. I mean, again, I only had brothers, so like there was no way we're going to have Olsen twins in our house. Even though we did watch Full House, to be honest. It does make me think of... Uh, I, I heard when I went to film school that one of Disney's most profitable film franchises was ac actually the, the Buddy movies, like Air Bud and... Basically, that, 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 that whole series that degenerated into, like, little puppies talking and stuff like that. And one of the reasons they were so profitable is because they were so cheap to make. And people would buy them for their kids because they didn't care about what their kids watched. They would just buy whatever, you know, they, hey, they, you want the puppy movie, you get the puppy movie. And they, there was enough of that market that these films turned a huge profit. So maybe that's what... The Olsen twins tapped into before Air Buddy and all these were, were a thing. The Olsen twins were, you know, straight to VHS, like really got into that market. Movies that were came out in the, around this time, we have Little Women. That's interesting because we just had a recent remake of Little Women by Greta Gerwig just uh, this last Christmas season. So interesting. I haven't seen this one, the one with Winona Ryder and Kirsten Dunst. Looks like Dumb and Dumber was coming out pretty soon. <laughs> the Page Master. Wow. Uh, and Richie Rich. Man, yeah, I guess this is kind of the tail end of when um, Macaulay Culkin was like a really big child star. So I don't remember too much after Richie Rich. But yeah, there was a wild ride 
in that few years where he was actually he just kept making movies and they were and some I remember liking most of them. I liked Richie Rich. I liked the Page Master. I don't know if I'd like them today, but I did when I was a kid. I really liked this version of the Jungle Book. I used to watch that all the time with Jason Scott Lee uh, as Mowgli. It was an adult Mowgli. It was just a very different telling of the Jungle Book, but I thought it was pretty, pretty cool. I actually liked the darker elements of it. Like there was, there's a whole journey at the end where they, where all the bad guys just start getting picked off one by one. One drowns in quicksand, and one gets eaten by Shere Khan, and I thought it was kind of cool. Um, it, it was one of the only ones that really focused on the colonialism aspect of uh, India in that point in time, which is usually skipped over because it's kind of a dark history of the British. Lena Headey's in it, a very young Lena Headey, so check that out. And of course, Pocahontas came out this summer. That was supposed to be the big thing that Disney released, but... Um, it wound up not being the big hit that they were hoping for. They had that instead in The Lion King. All right, so let's see what's big in music. Oh, Garth Brooks. Sorry, I hate country music. My apologies to anyone who likes country music, but... Favorite group, Ace of Bass, Aerosmith, All For One, Green Day, and Nirvana. What a strange combination, hey? That's a weird combo. Ace of Bass. I kind of felt that this was after their time. I thought they were big in the early, early 90s, but hey, who am I to disagree with Disney Adventures? Um, Aerosmith. I hate 90s Aerosmith. I hate 90s Aerosmith. 70s Aerosmith? Got some good tracks in there. 90s Aerosmith? <laughs> um, I don't even know who All For One is. But of course, Green Day and Nirvana, everyone knows. This must have been right at the end of Nirvana's career, actually. So, then there's a little interview with the kid from the Santa Claus, Eric Lloyd. Very cool. What did you think the first time you saw Tim Allen in a Santa fat suit? It was weird. The suit looked real to me, and Tim looked like a totally different person. Deep. Actually, you know, I kind of like the idea of them interviewing kid stars in a kid magazine. Like, I feel like that's something that we could really connect to, and they're kind of speaking on that, that level. Looking at it now, like, his little answers are very, you know, rudimentary. Like, what were the animatronic reindeer like? They were neat. When they started moving, they looked very real. So, you know, not a lot of depth, but, but you know, if you're an eight-year-old kid reading that, that's exactly your reading level, right? Oh, man, they were really pushing this Indiana Jones game. So now we get into the meat, the main article of, of this, the uh, secrets of Star Trek. There's a lot of focus on Star Trek Generations. I actually like Star Trek Generations. I think it's a really underrated Star Trek film. A lot of people don't like it. And I acknowledge it's got flaws. It, you know, it's got plot holes you could, you could waltz right through, but I really like the villain and the conflict and the idea of um, the Nexus and stuff like that. That all really works for me. It just, uh, it has some final act problems that are, you know, they're there. They're, you, I won't pretend they're not there. You know what? Medium tier. It's in there like with, I say, the search for Spock, like that kind of level. And they actually managed to get um, interviews with William Shatner. And Patrick Stewart. So, hey, not too bad. Not a bad pedigree. <laughs> I, although I think uh, William Shatner isn't being uh, the most the most honest here. What did you want to be when you were a kid? I wanted to be Captain Kirk. Really? You wanted to be a Starship Captain? I wanted to be in a series called Star Trek. Oh, okay. Well, it's not convenient that you managed to land that role. What was it like working with William Shatner? He asked Patrick Stewart. He's charming and has a great sense of irony and self-mockery. We had a grand time and ended up being friends. What would Captain Picard think of Captain Kirk? I think he would find him brave, dedicated, impetuous, perhaps occasionally lacking in judgment, but without doubt, totally committed to his job. Well said. A breakdown of uh, Captain Kirk versus Captain Picard and what that looks like here. This was like the best time to be a Star Trek fan was the mid 90s. So not only did we have the movies coming out um, at this point, generations, but that meant that we were getting into the Star Trek of the Next Generation movies pretty soon. Right here, Voyager was just coming out. Voyager was, uh, yeah, it was debuting this month, January 1995, but also Deep Space Nine. So there are two series and movies on the way. Like it was just, it was just the best time possible to be a Star Trek fan. It was like the golden era. They managed to score an interview with Kate Mulgrew as well. Pretty cool. And Avery Brooks. So look at that. They got all the all the captains. So that's pretty neat. I actually just finished watching Voyager from start to finish. I just, it was on Netflix and I just watched the whole series. Actually, I went through Deep Space Nine and Voyager 
I've seen a lot of Voyager when it was on TV for the when it first aired, but uh, there's a lot I missed. It was kind of cool going through it all again. Deep Space Nine was actually, there was a lot more I hadn't seen of Deep Space Nine, and I actually wound up enjoying that series a lot more than uh, Voyager. No offense to Voyager fans. And then there's a little bit about Klingons here, trying to teach kids how to speak Klingon, because that is a great way to have kids be popular at school. You know, I grew up a Trekkie. I didn't really have much of a choice in the matter. Um, no regrets, of course, but when I was in school, I kind of have to had to keep it hush-hush, because I remember... I made a uh, a word search. We were doing like a, a uh, magazine made by the students, just a handful of us friends. We made a like a Xeroxed magazine and I put in a word search. It was like a Star Trek word search. And people were just like, oh, really? And that was like the first time when I was like, wait, you get you guys don't like Star Trek? And I'm like, well, what do you guys, what do you, what do you watch with your parents? Like, what do you, what do you even do then? Like, <laughs> it just didn't make any sense to me that some people didn't watch Star Trek because it was just such a part of like my family growing up that I just didn't know what else was on TV. You know, it was like there was the cartoons earlier in the day. You know, the Disney, the Disney afternoon, and all that stuff. And and then as far as adult programming went, uh, I knew about Star Trek. That may be. I can't think of whatever else. Maybe like I knew Matlock existed, but. What kids were watching Matlock. <laughs> so we're skipping a lot of this ice stuff because I'm really just looking through this for the pop culture artifacts. You know, last thing I need to do is um, take a look at things about uh, the North and South Pole and get depressed that we're running out of ice down there. So I thought there were more advertisements than this, but this is actually very uh, light on the ads. So there's been a few, but um, when I'm reading comic books, there's a lot more ads per page than in this. All right, let's see what we got. We got some weird yet true. Apparently the first head of the U.S. Postal Office was Ben Franklin. So, now you know. What did that guy not do? He just seemed to be everywhere back then. There are 170 septillion possible ways to play the 18 opening moves in a game of chess. I usually lose before 10 moves, so I don't know. Um, oh, and, and of course, I really like Disney Adventure because of the comics. The comics are great. It was a little unsatisfying when you'd start a comic and then it'd be like to be continued and then you forgot to get the one next month. So I usually like the standalone ones, even though they kind of lacked the substance. I wanted to get these every month, but I often couldn't because especially in the earlier days, I was kind of at my mom's, her discretion on whether or not I'd get them. Once I started buying my own, I think it was less of an issue. Kid Blast Off. Now, normally they were just comics of uh, cartoons that were out and you know already existed, but I don't know what this Kid Blast Off thing is. But it's hard to get too invested in it because I don't have the next issue. So, so it's to be continued. I never got to see how it continued. Darkwing. Oh yeah, this is where Darkwing Duck goes up against a bunch of ants who are trying to steal his picnic. Yeah, you know, like these comics are very rarely like haha -ha, like laugh out loud like really, really funny but they're amusing oh aladdin of course so yeah this is right when uh, aladdin was getting his own uh his own show i think return of jafar had come out and now there was an aladdin series which i didn't really watch to be honest oh and, and uh, a gargoyles comic yeah gargoyles man this is part two so i uh, see i missed part one of this um so i don't have a lot of context for it I got um, Gargoyle Season 1 on DVD. I haven't watched through it yet, but... Man, I remember liking that opening saga. That was such a great thing. Oh, now this is the stuff I'm talking about right here. The video games. <laughs> you know, you ever want a great uh, snapshot of what it was like to be a kid? Like, you, you zoom over to the the video games, and, and these, these were the games that were, like, state-of-the-art at the time. What's kind of awesome is that I have all the games on this page. Echo the T Oh no, I don't have Echo the Tides of Time. That's the sequel to Echo the Dolphin. I have the first one. This is one of the screenshots that I remember. Like, I remember wanting Echo because of this screenshot right here. I thought it looked so good. This is when I started to get really floored by how beautiful video game graphics were getting. This is kind of where I peaked for me, is I just love the 16-bit era so much, and I feel like it took a long time for games to kind of get that beautiful again. Because they were kind of ugly at the 32 and 62-bit era. Because it was really evolving. And then things started to look good by, like, GameCube, etc. But there's something special and magical about that 16-bit aesthetic. The Lion King I have on Super Nintendo. It's hard. It is so hard. I think most people know exactly what I'm talking about, though. And there's no code. You can't skip over anything. 
That's why it should have been on like the SNES Mini or something like that. That would have been so good. Earthworm Jim, of course. Uh, Earthworm Jim's a, a great game. I, I played that recently as well. Every time I play it, I get a little bit further. Um, Sonic and Knuckles. Now that one, I have gotten... You know what? I haven't played that nearly as much as I ought to. I have played it a little bit, but um, yeah, I need to give it a proper... Okay, we gave it a proper spin, um, but I just love the fact that it was it was a cartridge that you could plug other cartridges into, and that you could play Knuckles in Sonic Two, like that was so mind blowing. I never had a Genesis growing up, of course, so I have played most of those games later in life. Actually, all of these games I played later in life. My my uh, video game experience was very limited when I was a kid. Let's see, balls. I hear that this game is balls, actually. Virtual Racing and NHL Hockey. I had NHL. I had NHL 94, I think. Tetris 2 I have on the Game Boy. It is not as good as the regular Tetris. It's more Dr. Mario-like, really. And Donkey Kong Country right here. Boom. Best all-around game. Now that one I did play as a kid. Yeah, I, I love Donkey Kong Country. I, it is one of my favorites for sure. Card Shark. Oh yeah, collector cards. Remember that when that was a thing? Something happened and collector cards became like just not a thing anymore. I think my understanding is that the internet came in and people discovered that they weren't actually worth anything. Like people tried to sell their hockey cards and nobody would buy them. And so they, it was just determined that, oh, okay, they are not actually valuable. Like everyone thought they were collected cards a little bit but it was when i was younger than this i had like looney tunes sports cards and stuff like that we'll skip the games here there's a few things about what's going on next month but nothing you know, pearl jam and garth brooks more more like garth brooks lisa loeb so the the, the last thing i want to show you is this um bubsy ad bubsy 2 now i i thought i didn't know who bubsy was until i was older and more into like the retro gaming scene but apparently, you know, Bubsy's been in my life for a long time because I've known about this advertisement and and he's rearing his head, rearing his head again. And here's a here's a nice little cap for you. And so this is what a fold in thing. I, I don't want to fold it again because it's taken a long time for it to straighten out. But this is an announcement for new marshmallow and lucky charms. This ad is the origin of the marshmallow pot of gold. So there you go. That's when the pot of gold came to be. 1995. Boom. That was kind of a fun jaunt down memory lane. I, at least I, I think it was. I hope this turns into something kind of worth watching. Uh, if you like this, just let me know in the comments down below. Or give us a thumbs up. Um, I would be really curious to see if you want me to do more. I got a whole stack of these. I wouldn't mind sharing them with you guys. Um, I'll try to go by date order. And when I'm done mine, I'm, I think I have some friends who probably still have some of theirs from when they were younger. So yeah, let me know what you would like to see if, if this is something that actually interests you. I wish I had ones that are even older than 1995, but uh, maybe I could seek them out. I wonder how much they go for on eBay. I don't know. Well, thanks so much for watching and uh, going through Star Trek Secrets, the January 1995 edition of Disney Adventures. Uh, live long and prosper and have yourselves a great rest of your day.